Uh, Senator, uh, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm a South Bronx resident. I'm a co-founder of an organization called South Bronx Unite, and I'm a board member of the Bronx Council for Environmental Quality. I want to compliment you. Thank you so much for understanding this very important issue uh, and, and trying to address it as it pertains to children in their classrooms and in schools. As you see, I'm struggling with trying to put my child to sleep um, and fed him while you're waiting on you to come. Really great. Thank you for being here. <laughs> my question um, pre pretty much really addresses the fact that we know that there's, you know, I, I again want to compliment you on what's happening indoors and how to make it better for our children indoors. But our children are breathing outside air that's not the same as any other community, right? One in five of our children have asthma. My, my newborn son, six months old, I don't want him to contract asthma like so many of our other children have. You know, and we're, we're being set with a dynamic or a dilemma where we're being asked to choose jobs over air quality where we're being asked to be the largest industrial business zone in the city and be encircled by highways thanks to Robert Moses. But from top down, we're getting the same type of treatment with more and more industrial facilities being put in our community knowing that we have asthma issues. The borough president spoke very well. He knows his wife is asthmatic. We know we have family members in this community that are asthmatic and friends who are dying because of the highest mortality rates. How do we address the outdoor air quality issues? How can we stop bringing in businesses like Fresh Direct who want to bring a thousand diesel truck trips to our community knowing that they will help to aggravate what's already a serious issue? Yeah. And I just appeal to you. I thank you so much for being here. This is such an important issue. I've been fighting tooth and nail for this issue for more than five years about how our air quality cannot change. Can't get worse. We need to make it better. We do, and you're exactly right. Uh, the reason why the Bronx has the high asthma rates it has is because of the situation of the highways yes. and industrial use. And so what I know the Bronx Borough President works on is trying to do smart, smart development to clean up sites that are environmentally tainted. We have, I spent a lot of money, I spent a lot of time getting money for brownfield sites so that actually, because there's a lot of, environmental hazards, not just what's coming from the exhaust, it's also environmental degradation over time. So one of the things that I spent a lot of time on the EPW committee, which is the Environment Public Works Committee, is getting funding for mass transit to get more cars off the road, but also to get funding for um, cleaning up brownfield sites, which we have a ton of in the Bronx. And if you can get resources to clean up old sites, that's less toxins in the environment, less toxins in the air. So it is a long-term, large-scale effort to be able to make the Bronx healthier for our families here, and I'm 100% committed to it. So thank, thank you. you. Yes, please, Mr. Burke. Uh, it, is, it is an interesting balance. Uh, look, we've been dealing with asthma since I was first elected 20 years ago, uh, and, and we all have family members. Everyone has a story. The, the single uh, biggest culprit uh, and contributor to asthma and pollution in the air are existing buildings. And those open, so since I've been the borough president, that's the reason why uh, there's been an executive order out of my office that anyone who wants to do new housing, they have to do it in a green, sustainable way. Now what we're working on is a revolving green fund so that we can go to existing buildings, retrofit them, so that they don't um, emit the, the, the particulate matter and the pollution that exacerbates asthma, bronchitis, and other respiratory illness. With regards to uh, new development coming in, one of the things that we negotiate is to try to have them be, uh, come in with the, with the cleanest available fleet. Uh, it, it is a dynamic here because we have such high unemployment, or we used to have the highest un unemployment rate. We've been creating jobs. What we need to do is continue to work at all levels of government uh, because one thing that we cannot do is take away all of the trucks. If, you know, if, if, if we follow a certain logic, if we take all of the trucks from Hunts Point, from the city of New York, then we're doing away with all those jobs. And, and then how do we explain that to families who also need those jobs to put food on the table? It is not easy. And I understand, you know, when there's frustration. Uh, but it's, it's something that we, you can rest assured that we've all been dealing with so that when anybody wants to create new jobs and dealing with those um, uh, uh, areas in the, in the Hunts Point section of the Bronx, dealing with uh, the industrial businesses, we're trying to do all that we can so they can ret retrofit their, their um, fleets uh, and have it so that their fleets are the cleanest fleets possible. Thank you. Right, I, thank you. I, but our children, our children need more than I know. Our children need more need mitigation now, not more of the same. Thank you. I'm with you. Uh, any press questions? Go ahead. Uh, is there anything in the bill that, that would compel the, the DOE, for instance, to apply for these block grants, or is it something 